January has been a challenging month on the water. So far, we've had a race against time to get through a lock closure, been frozen in during an Arctic blast, and hit by two storms, Isha and Jocelyn. In this week's vlog, in a desperate attempt to get water, we are suddenly told to do an emergency stop. What's happened to you? So there's debris, there's debris under the bridge that can get caught in your propeller. Not man in the water to clear it. We lose something important to the watery depths of the canal. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! And I hold up traffic. Okay, the barriers have come down, but the bridge isn't raising. Why does this always happen? Where will we end up? Looks like a dinner plate. So we don't know what's going to happen today. We've got locks to do. We have got high winds. It's an adventure. So let's go. Let's do this. Do this really quickly. Oh my gosh, that's my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, this wasn't my mouth. Oh no. I lost my gloves. Oh. I feel like John Wayne this morning. Go away. Quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. Jeez. Oh, oh my goodness, what a start. What a start! Pass the alpacas. The plan is to travel along the Trent and Mersey all the way to the lock closure in the hope that it's open again and we can get through it to the water point then onwards to start life on the Colden Canal for a while. This is Trenton Lock we're about to do. There you go, look at that, isn't that beautiful? The Kingfisher. Trentum Lock is a deep one at 11 foot 11 inches, but we've got some really deep locks coming up. After coming out of the lock, I noticed so many Canal River Trust workers busy making sure that the towpath was safe. And after the storms we've been having, it's wonderful to see our gorgeous tree still standing. The birds are in full voice this morning. It feels like spring it really does already i think mean, it's a bit early but it's a real spring-like feel with all the birds singing morning ducks this is the area of hem heath and in 1924 the landscape here changed dramatically It became a colliery, which by 1966 was producing a million tonne of coal per annum. In World War II, when there was a shortage of men to work down the mines, Ernest Bevin, the Minister for Labour and National Service, devised a scheme called the Bevin Boys, where a lottery decided which boys would go to war and which ones would work down the mine.
Hemheath Bevan boy, Jim Bates, said working down the mines taught him a lot about life. Every morning the miners would greet you with, are you happy? Bevan boys are often thought about as the forgotten army of World War II. Alice Gray still minus her chimney hat. Didn't find that. Oh gosh, what's happened here? It's telling us to stop. Is there a problem? Yeah. A HGV struck the bridge, so there's debris there's debris under the bridge that could get caught in your propeller. Put a man in the water to clear it. Thank you very much, thank you. So what happened? 11 o'clock last night, a driver was lost and they were driving an HGV vehicle because that bridge is not built for heavy vehicles and it doesn't really lead, I don't think, to anywhere um, that you need to go to. So they were lost, it was dark, it was 11pm, there were high winds, and that's when it happened. And they're down here today, sorting it out, and they don't think we're gonna have to wait very long, which is amazing. Oh my goodness. In the bitter cold water, this diver spent ages checking the bottom to make sure there was no debris. And then they put up a barrier to make sure that any boats going through were completely safe. Then they said we could slowly and cautiously dry through. That barrier there, we've got to stay within it. The wind is blowing us towards it. Oh, this is a little bit scary. You deserve a medal, honestly. A normal day. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much. There we go, still in the water. He just said it's just a normal day for him. Behind the trees is Stoke on Trent Football Club. We are Stoke, it says there. Stanley Matthews used to play for Stoke. He's a great hero around here. Well, he's a great hero everywhere, really, to be fair. And at one time, Stoke were one of the top teams. So at this boatyard it says tackle and bait, air guns, archery, boats and engines, country and western line dancing. Wow, that is a, an eclectic mix of things. The stock set of locks has a rise of 50 feet and the chambers feel very deep inside. And to get to them, you have to go under several very low bridges. <laughs> but this one led into Twyford Lock, which was a welcome sight because it was the one that had been shut and it was open. This is it, this is the new lock gate. Looking very smart, thank you CRT. And as you rise out of the chamber depths on this one, there's a gorgeous mural on the wall, which was done in collaboration with CRT and Stoke-on-Trent art, graphics and design students to raise awareness about plastic pollution. Onto the Calder. Oh, at last! Water is going into the tank. 
With a good night's sleep behind us and a full tank of water, we made our way to find the perfect mooring spot to call home for a week on the Colden Canal. Bedford Street staircase lock. So Alice Grace is going into the bottom chamber and then I will use the paddles of the bottom gate of the top chamber to let the water from the top chamber into the bottom chamber and hopefully that will balance out. Alice will go into the top chamber and then we'll use the water from the pound in front of the top chamber to fill the top chamber up. begun and I found a second one. You've got bulrushes and the reeds and this is a fantastic habitat for wildlife. Okay so this is an absolutely stunning stone wall. I don't know how old that stone wall is but there's time and care I've been put into laying those stones and They've got lovely lichens on them, I can see from here. Ivy spinning over the top. We've seen our first boat of the day. Well, the birds like it here, and birds are really good judges of character. The trees are full of them, I can hear them. Isn't that gorgeous? Mooring rings all along here. My nanny and granddad lived in a um, flat, in the flats in Mile End, and we used to go when we were little on the train to go out to see them. And they didn't have any trouble ever, but they had a terrible reputation, they really did. But it was lovely getting on the train and going to see my little old nan. She lived till 99. I think the scariest thing that happened to her is she was sitting in her chair watching television and she was in the lounge and it overlooked a green and the kids used to play out there, sports and stuff. And she reached off her chair. She was about 90, must have been about 95 at this point. She reached off her chair to go and get a custard cream because she was partial to custard creams probably it explains her longevity in life but she reached to get one and as she got off her chair suddenly there was a massive smash and when she looked around there was a pile of glass on the chair that she'd been sitting on and a cricket ball where the kids were playing sport had come through the window and the children were really worried and apologetic and everything but basically that custard cream saved her life because she was a little old frail lady and a whole pile of glass landing on her wouldn't have been very good Well, that's the last thing you want to see when you've just lost your own chimney. We're coming up to an electric bridge now, which will be exciting. Um, a bit upset that we've just lost our whole chimney. 
so we're gonna have to find a chandelier to replace that. Here it is. Right, open, hold open. They've gone down, and now it says uh, to stop bridge at any time, release the open button. So I just keep this down. This should hopefully start moving to lower bridge press and hold close button until the bridge is fully down to stop the bridge at any time release the close button turn key out of the press and remove the key will not release until the bridge is fully closed this bridge is taking ages to open and i've got my hands on open why is that not opening Why is this taking so long? My press and hold open button until bridge is fully raised. Oh no, there's a car now. Oh, it's taking ages. Come on, bridge, start raising. Start raising. Why is that not raising? The barriers have come down, but the bridge isn't raising. I don't understand. I can't take my finger off it. Why does this always happen to the whole load of traffic on this side? Okay, so I had to press both of them at the same time, the open and the close at the same time to reset it and start again. We've got a bit of a tree with us. Pretty here. You hear the robin. And then as we came out of Engine Lock on our way to Stockton Brook, a gorgeous kestrel watched as I worked the paddles. The last two days had been chock-a-block with adventure, but it was nice to be moored in the middle of nowhere with bunnies and geese for company. I have got pen, that's <laughs> not pen, I've got pen, I've got paper, and I've got a patch which is here to do my big garden bird watch, my bit of citizen science. So I'm gonna sit here for an hour and see what birds visit this area. I put a couple of sunflower seeds out um, along the ground and on the roof of the narrow boat. Also on the roof next to the sunflower seeds is our brand new chimney with its very own hat thanks to Facebook Marketplace and a local seller for just £15. What an absolute bargain! So we've got an hour to see what visits and I'm going to record it all down and then submit my, my results online. Uh, so far I've read that the most popular bird is the blue tit that's been spotted and starling numbers are doing very well too. So uh, let's just see what we get in this area. What a beautiful bird here. 
So, so far, seeing three magpies and this blackbird. I think he felt sorry for me. I had, I had empty edges and he flew over to join me. Count me, he said. Count me. Oh, I got a buzzard. Oh. What have we got exactly? Let's have a proper look. It's definitely crow buzzard war. Okay, we've got some birds here. It's, it looks like a missile thrush. One. Where's the other one gone to? Crow. It's another for the crows. Oh wow. Crikey, how'd you go about counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a blue It's way dark. Right. One, two, three, that was. Three more blue tits. Male and female mallard. I'm not even sure if you're allowed to count mallards. But I'm gonna write them down. You've got a long tail tit. In the just, or not distance, it's just next to the tree, next to the boat. Normally when you get one, you get a, a volley of them. But this one seems to be by itself. Oh, it's gone. Good, now I've just got to input those results into the computer for the RSPB. You might be wondering what address I used. Well, I was moored near the old Stockton Brook Pump House, this gorgeous building that used to pump water to Kid Grove, Golden Hill and parts of Tunstall from 1884, using at first two Davy steam engines. This building was sold a few years ago and I've heard plans for it include a wedding venue, restaurant and art gallery. After I inputted the results, I was curious to see what had been spotted in the local area. Well, you can see here, I didn't spot any house sparrows, but they were popular in Staffordshire. But the missile thrush was an unusual spot, so I was quite excited about that. But when I wasn't doing the bird count, of course, I spotted a whole chattering of siskin. Typical. A world of bridge brick in his hands, orange atlas, chest deep stands, in the cold cut, coloured brown, this titan heightens what fell down, what lurks beneath its murky depths, besides the van rammed parapet, objects lost, some tossed away, others knocked off, sunk in clay. It snakes along with stomach full of bits of boats and bicycles and winds its way with slithered ease past bottle kilns and collieries. But cast your eyes upon its skin, you'll see reflected, wobbling, a kestrel on a wire trapeze, the face of moon, the arms of trees, shadows cast 
onto each scale of all who pass the old canal. <laughs>